So you've seen a lot of people using trekking pole tents and every time you pull out your non-trekking pole tent, you think, hmm, would a trekking pole tent be better? But then you go online and see that the prices of those tents you see are more than $500. What the? And you decide you are totally cool with your non-trekking pole tent. But what if I told you you could get a trekking pole tent for less than $50 that weighed less than two and a half pounds? You can leave the weight of those heavy aluminum tent poles at home be in the trekking pole tent club and still buy groceries that month. There are some things I love about this tent, a few that annoy me. I'll tell you all about it in this video. Let's get into it. What's up, Dirt Junkies? My name is Jeff, and thank you for stopping by Dose of Dirt. I picked up this tent off of Amazon with my own money and I've been using it for several months. I'm ready to give you a full rundown, including rain test, which did not go so well. But first, let me give you some specs on the tent, then we'll set it up, I'll show you around and tell you what I love about it and what I don't love about it. You can pick this tent up off of Amazon for $50. The list price is $60, but it seems like one of the colors is usually on sale for just $50. Bucks. What you get is a storage sack, the tent of course, 10 aluminum shepherd hook stakes, one post to open a ventilation area, as well as some guy lines. It is a single wall tent made from 210T polyester, so it's fairly thick and durable, and it has a polyurethane coating that should make it waterproof. The weight is listed as two and a half pounds, when I put it on my own scale, it comes in at 1,064 grams, which is only 2.34 pounds or about 37 ounces. That is pretty light for a $50 tent. As I mentioned, it is a trekking pole tent, so if you want this tent and you don't have trekking poles already, you'll need to pick up at least one, but probably a pair, so you can use it to set up your tent. Let's set this tent up. I'll show you how that's done and then show you around the tent. Turns out the ground of this campsite is super compact and I cannot get these stakes in the ground without a hammer. So we're gonna move right over there and set the tent up. New spot, this is gonna work better, I hope. And let me say right off the bat, this is not the easiest trekking pole tent to set up. I think there's a few reasons why, which we'll get to in a second, but it's just not very easy to set up. It takes some practice. What I've found in setting it up is that it works best if I do the three stakes on the back side of the tent first, then insert the trekking pole, stake out that guy line that comes from the top of the trekking pole, and then stake out the other corners. But even after I do that, I find that I have to go around and make some little adjustments to make sure that everything is taut. And you can tell, even by looking back at it right now, it's not perfectly tight, because that's hard to do with the way this tent's made. The reason I think that is, is because the trekking pole isn't centered within the tent, the two door flaps are not the same size, and the tent's just sort of an awkward shape. But with a little bit of practice, you can get a fairly good pitch on this tent. So I wanna show you the dimensions inside the tent because that is a really important thing to know, but first let's talk about the entry and exit from the tent. So there's only one door on this tent. I like to roll up this side, and then you've got this huge door to get in and out of the tent. You can see it opens nice and big. Although the different size of the door flaps is a bit of a pain when you're setting up the tent, it's really nice when you're getting in and out of the tent because you have so much room right here, rather than half of the door on one side of the pole and the other half on the other side. You can also roll this mesh up and attach it to a toggle over here. And just to give you an idea of the actual dimensions of the tent, it's listed to be seven feet, three inches long, two feet, nine inches wide, but that's the widest point of the tent, right there kind of where your midsection would be. That doesn't tell you how wide the head end or the foot end is. And to show you the inside dimensions, I actually brought a few sleeping pads and my quilt so you can see how much room there is inside of this tent. Let's blow them up real quick. I'm actually gonna use my favorite sleeping pad that's blowing up inside right now, the Trekology UL80. It's 23 inches wide, 75 inches tall, and four inches high. All right, let me take you inside the tent, show you just how big it is with this pad in there. So you can see there's quite a bit of room over here on the side, just because of the shape of the tent. It's 23 inches wide, so there's plenty of room up there at the head end. But then if we look down here at the foot end, you'll see the tent's just barely 23 inches wide. So it barely fits a 23 inch wide pad down there at the foot end but plenty of space here in the middle. You can even fit your pack over there on that side and plenty of space here at the head end. It's just that foot end that's a little bit tight. With this four inch pad, I have to duck my head a little bit to get in and out. I'm six feet tall, so that gives you an idea of what your peak height is in here. I can sit inside the tent if I sit right under the peak, 
But right here, coming in out of the doorway, my head does touch the tent a little bit. And as you can see, that foot end, there's not a whole lot of height clearance. So I'm actually gonna get out my quilt and show you just how crowded it can get down there at the foot end. Okay, let's give the quilt just a minute to loft and I want to talk to you about the ventilation of this tent. The only ventilation other than this giant door in front is a tiny little window over here on the foot end. It's really small and it's difficult to get open very far. It does provide a little bit of ventilation once you get inside your quilt, especially if it's a loftier quilt, it's gonna block a lot of that ventilation. So the ventilation isn't great. Now let's talk about the waterproofness of this tent. As I said, I submitted it to a full rain test. This one unfortunately failed miserably. It's actually the worst rain test I've ever done on any tent I've purchased. There was a ton of rain in all of the corners, not what you want to see from a shelter that's supposed to keep you dry in inclement conditions. Good news is I've learned how to waterproof a tent for fairly cheaply. I'll include a link in the description below to a video you can check out after this one about how I waterproofed this tent. I don't love that it doesn't come waterproof, especially when it says it has a polyurethane treatment to waterproof it, but that's something that's easily fixable and I don't mind doing it if the tent's only $50 to begin with. Another really important thing when it comes to a tent is the durability. As I mentioned already, this tent is made of 210T polyester, which is a fairly thick material. As you can see here, I haven't even put a ground cloth or a footprint underneath it. That's the way that I've set it up on my backpacking trips as well. I just haven't felt the need because that polyester is nice and thick. I know that it's waterproof. I have a lot of faith in the durability of this tent just because it's a heavier, thicker material. Now, wait. As I mentioned, this tent comes in at just 2.4 pounds, which is really light for a $50 tent. To put that in perspective, I paid almost four times as much for my Lanshan Pro 1, which comes in at 26 ounces. So in order to save 11 ounces of weight from this tent to my Lanshan Pro 1, cost me $150. So at two and a half pounds, this Underwood Aggregators trekking pole tent is really light for just $50, a pretty good deal for the weight. Before I tell you what I love and don't love about this tent, as well as give you my thoughts on whether I think it's a good buy, I'd love to know what you think. So head down to the comments, tell me, based on what you've seen of this tent so far, do you think $50 is a good price for this tent? And would you consider getting it? Let's talk about the things that I love about this tent. First is the price, a $50 tent. You really cannot find very many tents at that price range, especially for the weight, which is another thing I really like of just two and a half pounds. Another one is the way that they've done the layout. I know I mentioned it makes it difficult to set up, but I like the way that that trekking pole is off center. As you can see, it gives you a huge opening to be able to get in and out of the tent. I also really like that that's on the foot end of the tent because I really feel like I can just sit down in the tent and then stretch out on my sleeping pad and I'm good to go. There is also lots of space at the head end of the tent. I like to take two pillows with me, an inflatable pillow and my Teton Sports Camp pillow, which means my head is pretty high up off of the ground on top of my four inch sleeping pad. So a lot of headroom is really important in any tents that I purchase. This one has plenty of headroom for my big head on top of two pillows on top of a four inch sleeping pad, which is really nice. Let me tell you some things I don't like about this tent. First and foremost, as you've likely already guessed, is the lack of room at the foot end of the tent. I just really don't like the way my quilts rub against the side of the tent all night long. If there's condensation, my quilt gets totally soaked, which is not what you want. The second thing I'll mention that I really don't like about this tent is the lack of ventilation, and that's connected to the lack of room at the foot end of the tent. The lack of foot room wouldn't be as big of a deal if there was better ventilation, but the fact that your only ventilation is this huge door, and then that little window at the foot end, there just isn't enough ventilation if you're in a humid environment. Now, there are other things about this tent that were fine. The material and quality seem good. There's plenty of room in there other than the foot end. And overall, it seems like a fine tent. The setup can be a little bit tricky at first, but you get used to that and then it's not a big deal. The last thing I'll mention that I really didn't like about this tent is that it was not waterproof right out of the box. Now, other people may have had a different experience and received a tent that was waterproof. All I can say is that mine definitely wasn't. The good news is, as far as things I don't like, that one's not a big deal and can be easily fixed. So I think this tent is a great deal for just 50 bucks. And if you wanna see a video about how I waterproof the tent, I'll put a link to that right up here. Remember, life is better with some dirt in it.